morning and welcome. Hey, I want to say welcome to everybody on site, but let's also welcome our guests that are with us on Facebook today. We are going to lift up the name of the Lord, right? So I've gone to Psalm 150. Work with me here for just a second. Right there in Psalm 150, it tells that we are going to praise Him for His marvelous acts. And we are also going to praise Him because of His surpassing greatness. We are going to praise Him with the trumpet. Oops, forgot to clear that one with Jay. But we are going to praise Him with strings, right? Jay, Andrew, and Dave, and Randy. And we're going to praise Him with some resounding cymbals. Josh has that covered. I hope you are ready to do that today. Folks, let me mention just a couple of things by way of announcement. This is important because it's ways that you can get involved with your other friends here at Parkway and go out and have a great time together. There are also ways to serve. The first one is in that first category, and that is going for some fun. Next Saturday morning, if you would like to go canoeing, I hope that got some of your, your attention at that point, Go and see Daniel this morning in the lobby area. Going to launch out of Kingston Springs, but you need to sign up with him today and make sure you have everything in order for that. Now, at the very same time, a little competition here next Saturday in the morning, we're going to have Operation Clean Sweep, and that's going to be uh, a place where we really need your help. If you don't like canoeing, I'm expecting to see you here. We need to do some great cleaning in our preschool area to get things ready for the fall programs as they launch. So we hope to see you for that. This Wednesday, including, we'll continue on with what is a Southern Baptist, but we're also going to have registration time for our English as a second language program. I am so excited, I hope you are too, to see them come back because they do a wonderful service in teaching English and they also spread the love of Jesus Christ through that. So that's this Wednesday at 5.30. Quick passing mention, folks, if you haven't helped out the Kingdom Kids ministry, you can do that today by looking at the needs that they have. You can pick up one of their special stickers, go and get that item, bring it back for them. Hey, I know they will accept your wonderful cash and check donations as well for that ministry. Now, welcome, folks. If you are a member, welcome. If you're just a friend here today, we're glad you're with us. And if you're a guest, we, of course, are glad you're here. We ask you to come by our, uh, our welcome desk that's across the lobby. It'll be on your left as you go straight out those back doors. And let us give you a, a free gift to remember your time here. But also, if you want to learn more about us, uh, we would love to uh, give you that information at that time. So, everybody back on your feet. Remember, we're going to lift him up with strings and, and vocal uh, instruments. And y'all go and greet each other now in the love of Christ.
Church, we hope you are ready to worship this morning, to give God all the glory that he is due, that he deserves. So let's worship together this morning. Let's get our hands together. Let's celebrate with everything that we've got. Come on. We sing, come let us worship the King. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what? See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, he conquered the grave. You free every captain, break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Faithful forevermore, you have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things, yes you will. God, you do great things. Hey. Oh, hero of All over 
to worship this morning, church. We continue to remember that our firm foundation is built on Jesus. So let's sing to him this morning. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe.
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Father, we're so thankful to be here to worship you this morning. Your music, your scripture, continue to open our hearts and our minds this morning. Let us be molded, let us be transformed by you this morning. 
You're so great. We love you. Your precious and powerful name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Thank you guys for worshiping. You can go ahead and be seated at this time. Parkway family, so glad you joined us online and also here in person, worshiping together in your car, at your house, in your car, driving down the road on the interstate. Hope that when we pray, you don't close your eyes, but just worship with us as we, uh, as wherever you find yourself today as the Parkway family, glad that you're joining us today. Hope that you're having a great week, a lot of great things, opportunities coming up. Let me just mention the canoe trip is this Saturday. And uh, Heather and I will be going on the canoe trip. I don't know if you know this or not, but Heather is a rabid canoeer. When I first met her, one of the most impressive things was that she grew up canoeing. Her family canoed. She, like, she would take her girlfriends canoeing, and they didn't have a clue how, how to do that. And when I found out that she knew how to do, do she told me that she could do the J-stroke. I went, hello, Heather. Wow, the J-stroke. That is an advanced level canoeing right there. When I found out that, so we have this battle of who's going to steer the canoe because she's as good as better than me. So uh, this Saturday, Heather and I and Maddie, we're going. So why don't you guys come with us? We're going to invite you. You can see Daniel in the foyer. You come join us canoeing. We'll have a great time going down the Harpeth River. It is good fellowship and sometimes fun, sometimes funny, but that's okay too, right? We're just the, the Parkway family getting together. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come join us. Also coming up soon is the ladies' retreat. I am not going on that. I'm not welcome. I got the wrong chromosomes apparently or something. I'm not welcome to go. But a great time coming up for the ladies' retreat. Doing life together. You're going to get away and just spend some time with, the, with doing ladies and whatever ladies' things do. I'm not sure what you do, but I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. But sign up for the ladies' retreat. And this next Sunday, you're not going to want to miss this next Sunday. It's kind of a come back to the fall, let's get ready, let's get together. We are having choir and communion together in one service. I think revival is going to break out. I mean, it's going to be awesome, right? We're going to serve Holy Communion. We're going to have a praise choir up here. It's going to be an incredible worship experience. There'll be a, something else added to it that I'll tell you about later on in this service, but next Sunday is going to be a special time in the Parkway family. Make your plans now to be here so that you can come and worship together in person as the Parkway family. Today we are closing out Philippians. I know it's been an eight week journey, but it's been timely for some people. And I tell you, this journey in the book of joy has been a challenge for me as I've learned some deficit in, in my joy level. And last week I asked you, what is your joy level? And some of you came up to me afterwards and said, I was kind of embarrassed about how low my joy level is, and I'm going to try to do better. So I'm going to ask you again, church, what is your joy level this week? Ten is joy off the charts. One is, what's joy? Somewhere in between. Where, how is your joy this week? Are you a four, a six, an eight? And if you don't, I thank you for sharing that one out loud. That was rhetorical, but hey, if you got a good number, shout it out. No one's yelling out one, I promise you. Nobody's like, oh, I stink today. No one's going to say that. Thank you for shouting out nine, whoever that was, right? I'm not a nine this week, but I'm working on it, right? But my question is, if you're not a nine, why not? What is it that's holding you back from having joy in your life? What is it that's holding you back? There's another, see? All the good numbers are coming out. No one's yet one yet. Anybody want to be honest and say one? I didn't think so. All right. At the end of Philippians, Paul is wrapping up chapter 4, and he doesn't end it with a summation. He doesn't end it with a good luck, guys. He doesn't do a, I got you guys, good luck to you, go out and have joy. He ends with a challenge. So today's message is going to end with a special challenge for Parkway a way that we can experience joy and share the joy of the Lord, not just with ourselves, not just with the people sitting next to you, not just the people watching at home, but we have an opportunity and a challenge before us, Parkway, to share the joy of the Lord with a certain people group around the world. And I'm really excited to tell you about that, but not yet. 
If you have your Bibles, turn to chapter 4, and we're going to look at verse 9 together. As Paul is still continuing to talk to us about joy in the Lord, and he's finishing up where we ended last week with verse 8. We're going to start with verse 9 of chapter 4 of Philippians, and Paul says this. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, anything that you've seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will, believe, will be with you. He said, of all these three chapters, of all the things that I've said and all the things that I've been talking about and all the things that you've seen me do, take those things and put them into practice, and you can have joy. The God of peace will be with you. He's saying, put your faith in action. Don't just watch and don't just wish and don't just dream and don't just say, oh, I wish I could have that. And you see someone else has that. Man, they've got it all together. And look, God is working on them. And look at that incredible faith. I wish I could have that. Don't do that. He said, don't just think about it, dream about it. Do it. Do what you see me doing. He says it in 1 Corinthians 11. He says a little bit different, right? We'll come that up on the screen. He says, you should imitate me because I am imitating Christ. That's kind of a bold statement. But what he's saying is, if, if you don't know what to do in the Christian life, if you can't figure out joy, if you can't figure out how to be a follower of Jesus, if the world has confused you between right and wrong, and if you don't know, then just do what I'm doing. Watch me and follow me, and I will show you the way. It's kind of like if you go bowling, and I don't know if any of you are great bowlers. Anybody here bowl over 150? I think that's a great score. Anybody? Yeah, I see of you. Gloria Price is a great bowler. She can, like, bowl like nobody's business, right? She goes every week and bowls in leagues, and some other of you do the same. But if you were bowling, sometimes when you're looking at the end of that alley, and those pins look so far away, and for some of us, they're kind of fuzzy. You know what I'm saying? The glasses need to be updated, right? You're looking down at that aisle, all the way down there, and if that's your goal, and you can't really tell what's what or whatever. So whoever created bowling, they knew that for some of us, looking and aiming at the pins wasn't going to be realistic, and it's not very effective, so they came out with another solution. There's actually arrows that they painted on the bowling alley, like just a few feet in front of you. And the idea is that if you look at the arrows and you pick the arrow that you want, and if you can make your ball, I'm left-handed, can you tell? If you make your ball go over that arrow, then down there it's going to have the results that you want. It'll hit the pins where you want them to. When you go bowling, do you look at the pins or do you look at the arrows? What Paul is saying is if you can't see the mark, if you can't see where you're supposed to go, I am the arrows of faith. You just look at me. And I'm going to lead you where you need to go. Be a follower of me, is what he's saying. Follow my example. The things that I've said and the things that I do, take those things and watch that. And if you can't figure out how to be a Jesus follower, then just read my words. Take these words that I have given you. And put them into practice. James 1.22 says, do not just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Don't just listen to what the Bible says. Put it into practice. And if you will put it into practice, you're going to see God do amazing things in your life. Don't just watch. Don't just wish. Put things into practice. The second thing Paul tells us in this chapter is that we need to live with eternity in mind. To live with eternity in mind. Go to verse 10. Verse 10 says this. Rejoice greatly in the Lord, that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you've been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, because I have learned to be content with whatever my circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. Can somebody in here say amen? You know what it is to be in need? I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, or whether living in plenty or in want. Paul's saying that when you live with eternity in mind, you get beyond your circumstances. He's been a traveling missionary for all these years, and he's traveled through all these lands. And while there have been times when he's had plenty to eat, then there's times when he's eaten very little. 
There's been times when he's had everything that he could possibly want, good times, if you will. Then there are other times when it's been a struggle. And he said, in the midst of all of this, I've had eternity in mind. I didn't worry and sweat the small stuff. I didn't worry about where I was going to eat or where I was going to sleep. I am here with eternal things in mind. I am serving God. I'm trying to make a difference in the world. I'm trying to do all these things. And he said, and you guys have had not had an opportunity to be a part in that. But that's going to change. He said, sometimes you didn't have a chance to support me and to be a part of me, the missionary, traveling the world. But then he says this. He said, I know the secret. What a bold statement. This is verse 12. I have learned the secret of being content in any circumstance. I have learned the secret to being content in any and every situation. And for you and I, whether you find yourself in need or in want or in plenty, whether you're having a good week or a bad week, you're having a great year or a bad year, your marriage is on the heights, your marriage is struggling, your job is going great, or maybe it's not, wherever you find yourself today, Paul says, I found the secret to having contentment and joy in all circumstances. And then in verse 13, he brings it. This is, this is his secret. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Some of you Bible drillers just went, oh, I know that verse. There's a reason why you know that verse. There's a reason why we read it and we memorize it because it's important for us to know that no matter what we face, that we can endure all things. You can survive all things. You can do more than just survive. You can thrive through difficulty because God will provide a way through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. He will give you the strength. But here's the, here's the key. It has to be God's plan. You see, when I was young, I thought I would be an NBA basketball player. There's a problem with that. And you already know the problem. Why are you laughing? I, I was pretty good, right? I was short, not tall enough, I was not fast enough, I was not good enough, and my vertical leap is measured in like millimeters, not like, like, right? There was a problem with that. So I could say, hey, God's gonna give me the strength to do whatever I want to do. I wanna be an NBA player. God, you give me the strength to get there. Isn't that what it says? He will give me the strength. I can do all things. I can be an NBA player. If that was God's will, he would help me get there. Obviously, it was not God's will. If I had become an NBA player, I would not have served in ministry for 30 plus years, and I certainly would not be standing before you today as a pastor. I'd be in the NBA, retired, living in three houses, three mansions on the beach, or something like that. But that was not God's will for me. No, no. God's will was something different. So I can't go to God and say, this is what I want, and then expect God to get me there. And then when I don't get there, say, God failed me. That's not how it works. If it is God's plan for your life, it is what God's will for you, he will help you. You can do anything. You can endure anything that comes your way because Christ will give you the strength and he will help you become exactly what he wants you to become today. Some people have gone through some things through this last few weeks. They've been in here on a Sunday. They've heard a conversation about joy, and the next week their life fell apart. And they're hanging on to the promises of God's joy, right? Jack McMurtry, Tom Mosier, and this week, Adam and Brittany Heron. The Howrens had a tragedy in their life. Adam's mom tragically suddenly passed away this week. We were talking on Monday afternoon about joy. And I said, Adam, you never know when life is going to happen. It could be, I said, tomorrow it could be me, it could be you. And the next morning he texted me. My mom was being life flighted to the hospital. We had no idea it was going to be him. You have no idea if it's going to be you. You don't know what you're going to be facing tomorrow. But the promise of God's word is that no matter what you face, You can endure all things. You can survive all things. You can even thrive and have joy in the midst of everything and anything because Christ will give you strength. Do you believe that? 
I mean, like, do you really believe that? Enough that it affects not just how you think, but how you feel and how you act. Do you have eternal things in mind? Or are you living your life in the middle of your circumstances, caught up in the midst of what's going on today? The pain of today will pass. We did a funeral here yesterday for Chief Joe Casey. And we talked about 96 years of life. And he lived a full life. He did more in his life than most of us will do combined, right? But all of those struggles that he had in his life, they passed. And he's standing in the presence of Almighty God. And you, whatever you face, and it's not even like when you end your life, he will help you today get through it. How can you be in a waiting room? And how can you sit and fill up a waiting room praying for your loved one who's going through brain surgery? How can you do that? It's because you have eternal things in mind and you know that God's got you and that no matter what you face, it's going to be okay. He's going to get you through. He didn't promise it was easy. He didn't say life was you're going to like it. He said that I will be your strength and that the power and the strength through Christ will help you get through and you can endure and you can do all things. Have you ever seen that movie, uh, Major League? There was this scene in that movie where the guy was going up to bat and he kept striking out and he could not hit a curveball. And his teammate said, hey, you need to go to Jesus with that. You, so you, you, know, you need to ask Jesus into your heart and, and, and Jesus will help you. And the batter, kind of, he kind of went, I don't think that's going to help. And his teammate says, are you saying Jesus can't hit a curveball? He said, no, that's not what I'm saying. Sometimes we think that no matter what we're going through, that God just can't help. It's just too big for him. It's too personal for him. And we just think that we just, God wouldn't understand. And how could Jesus possibly affect that in our lives? He can and he will. You can do all things. You can endure all things through Christ who gives you strength. And Paul says that we need to have eternity in mind, not be caught up in that. And he says, I have that secret that secret that helps me get through bad days. And the reason that that we fail sometimes is that we try to accomplish heavenly things, eternal things in an earthly way. We try to do it ourselves and we try to be better and we try to be stronger and we try to be more educated and we try to just be a better this and a better that. But you know what? There's no joy found in that because joy comes from God and from God alone. And the only way you can rise above your circumstances is to do eternal things in an eternal way. Lift your eyes to God. Trust in him in the good times and in the bad. And Paul's telling the church in Philippi that you have a chance to be a part of eternal things. The third thing he says that we need to give to eternal things. We need to give to eternal things. Verse 14 Yet it was good for you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you the Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving or receiving except for you. Paul's traveling as a missionary, and he's out traveling, and no one is supporting him except the church in Philippi. They see the need, and they shared in his troubles, but they began to send resources to him to help his ministry. Keep going, verse verse 16. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me again and again when I was in need. Not that I'm looking for a gift, because I'm looking for what can be credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more, meaning I've I've been blessed by God. That's all that I need. However, he said, I am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gift that you sent, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice. They are pleasing to God. And my God will meet all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. He said, I was traveling, and you, you decided to be a part of my ministry, and you decided to share in my troubles. And they began to send him resources, and when Epaphroditus showed up, they gave him any more while he's in Rome and he's in prison, and he said, I can do more ministry now because you have been giving to missions. You've been giving into ministry, and because of that, you are a part of me traveling the world, sharing the joy of the Lord. And watch this, they're obviously giving, but they're giving not out of their excess. They're giving 
with what they don't have. The church in Philippi was not rich. The people were not wealthy. They were, they were under distress. They were being persecuted. The Jewish people would not do business with them. The Roman people would not do business with them because they're followers of Jesus. And so they didn't have a lot of money. And yet Paul said you continually to give when nobody else would. It had to have been a sacrifice. Because why else would God say that God will meet your needs according to his glorious riches? If they were giving with the money left over, God, he wouldn't have to say God will provide your needs. They would say my needs are met. I'm good. I don't need anything else, and I'll give you what's left over. Apparently, they were sacrificing, and they were trusting God. And he was saying, if you will sacrifice, and if you will give, then God will bless you. He will meet all of your needs, a step of faith. Apparently, they were giving as a step of faith. And how do we know that? Because the verse before, because their giving was a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, and that was pleasing to God. They were giving to eternal things. They could have easily said, I'll just give for myself. I'll hang on to what I've got because I just want to take care of my own. But that's not what they were doing. They were wanting to share the joy of the Lord with the people around the world. And they were giving in sacrifice, not in excess. And it was well-pleasing to God. When you and I give, God begins to bless when we, you and I as believers, if we give to eternal things, God begins to move and he begins to bless because of our sacrifice. And when a church, listen to this, when a church gives sacrificially, God begins to move in that church and he begins to bless. And Paul says, don't worry about it, that God will provide all of your needs. You give as a sacrifice. You give as a step of faith. You give because there's a need and you want to be a part of eternal things. And if you do that, then God will Will provide all of your needs. And that is where we get tripped up. We give in our excess with what's left over, don't we? After we paid our bills, after we put gas in the car, and whoo, that hurts, right? After we do that, then we see what's left. And if there's anything left when the offering plate goes by like it used to, right? We would look and see what's in my wallet today. Can I give a little bit or not? That is not sacrificial giving. Sacrificial giving is when you plan it in advance, you pray over it. God gives you a number and you go, whoo, that's a big number. God, how am I going to do that? He said, trust me. Sacrifice for something eternal, something that's going to make a difference, something that could, that could bless somebody else for a change. You're already blessed. You've received joy. You've experienced the joy, right? But other people have not, and you have a chance to be a part of something that is bigger than yourself. That's what it means to give sacrificially. D.L. Moody is a pastor from the past, and he said this, what makes the dead sea dead? Because it is always receiving, and it's never giving out anything. What is it that many Christians, why are they so cold? Because they are always receiving, and they are never giving out anything. You see, the Dead Sea is dead because all it does is take in from the Jordan River. All the minerals and the salt comes in. It has no outlet for the water to go anywhere. And so the minerals just build up. And when they build up, it becomes such a high salt content that nothing can live there. It's dead because it has no way to give out. This past week, the Auburn basketball team from Auburn University was touring Israel doing these basketball tournaments. ESPN covered them. I don't know why, but I got to watch them because it's football season, but I got to watch some basketball. And it was neat to watch the whole basketball team tour Israel and they went to Jerusalem and to Bethlehem, and they walked the Via Della Rosa, and they saw the birthplace of Jesus. Some of them chose to be baptized in the Jordan River. I was very jealous of that. I would love to do that one day. And then the entire team went to the Dead Sea. And those who could swim and those who could not swim got in the Dead Sea, and they floated at the top, like almost out of the water. It was just weird looking. They're all just floating and laughing and cutting up and have a great time because the Dead Sea has such a high salt content that you float up to the top. Why? Because all it does is take in salt, and it never sends anything out. And what Paul is saying, the same thing, that you and I, 
if we just take in and take in and take in God's blessings and take in his riches and take in the joy and we never share it and we never send it and we never give it, the results are going to be you and I are going to die on the inside. We will become cold and calloused on the inside because all we want is more. Thank you, God, for my blessing. Can I have another? Thank you, God, for that blessing. Can I get another and another? And that's all that we tend to focus on is what we can get. But if we will give to eternal things, then God will bless and move. We give of our time. We give of our talent serving the Lord. And yes, we even give our money because that can travel around the world and can make a difference far beyond what we could ever do. We give to eternal things. Sure, we could give to ourselves. We could acquire more things for us. Do you really need more stuff? Isn't your closet already full? Isn't your garage overflowing? Mine is. Come get some of my stuff, please, right? Do we really need more things for us? Do we need to save up some more so that we can satisfy ourselves for just a few more minutes to make me happy for another week and then it's gone? Or do we want to give to something eternal that can make a difference forever and ever? Isn't that more important? And the last thing that Paul said is that we need to be giving the sharing, the joy of the Lord with the whole world, not just with your family not just with your friends, not just with the Parkway family. If God has blessed us and we've experienced the joy of the Lord, we know who Jesus is, shouldn't we want to be sharing that with everybody because they don't have that and they've not experienced that? How do we share the joy of the Lord? Verse 20, and to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. To God be the glory, more glory for God, more praise for God. We tell people about Jesus so that they can know about the love of God and they can praise him and that's more praise going to God. They can give him the glory for the change in their life so that that's more glory going to God. You and I don't want just the glory to be in here with these hundreds of people. We want more people to glorify his name. We want more people to praise his name and the way we do that is to share with something that's eternal to be a part of something that matters. And I want you to know that I was le looking at this and I was thinking of James 1.22. Don't just be hearers of the word, Parkway, but be doers of the word. We just read the challenge that we need to be about supporting things, sharing the love of Christ, the joy of Christ around the world. And eight weeks ago, we were praying about, God, give us an opportunity for Parkway to make a difference in the world. And God has provided a special time as this for us, the Parkway family. And so I said, there's a challenge coming. Here is the challenge. Let me tell you about the Jula people of West Africa. They're in Burkina Faso, which is a little country on the west side, kind of like the Ivory Coast over by the Congo and all that. Right over there is this country, Burkina Faso. In the midst of that country is this people group called the Jula tribe. And the Jula tribe is 100% Muslim. They have not heard the gospel. They don't know who Jesus is unless they read it in the Quran, which they probably have, but they don't know that he's the son of God and they've not heard about his atoning work. And for years, missionaries have been praying for the Jula tribe. And for years, we've been waiting for an opportunity to go in and share the gospel. And just recently, the door has opened, a miracle of God that the elders in those, these areas and these villages have said yes. And the missionaries have gone into there. And li listen to this. They've taken 30 people. Hang on. Don't go any further than that picture. They've taken 30 people, Muslim people, who have agreed to share stories of the Bible with the villages around them. They're all Muslim but they don't have any Christians there to use. And so they're using 30 of them and they'll come and they'll stop and they'll have these training sessions. And here's a picture of one where they teach them the Bible stories and then for like a week they'll train and then they'll send them out and they'll go in one weekend, they'll share the Bible stories with over a thousand people in different villages. They will travel all over the place. They'll cross over geographic barriers like rivers to get to those far villages and they will sit and tell the stories. Then they'll come back for training session number two. Here's another picture of training session number two. Go ahead. 
Here they are in a small group in their own language. And now they learn about some more stories of the Bible. And then they will leave and go for the week and they'll go and tell those stories. And over and over again, these people are telling the stories of the Bible. Brand new story. People are just blown away by them. And your question is, if they're Muslim, why are they allowing the stories to go forth? And it's because God's working. And it's an amazing work of God. It's a miracle that there have been some complaints from the Muslims. They said, we should stop these stories. And they will petition to like the elders. And the elders will say, we find value in these stories. These stories are helping us. We, we see power in these stories. And we're going to allow them to continue. Eight of the 30 that were trained have now given their heart to Jesus already. They can't be baptized there because the persecution will be too much. In September, they're going to go off somewhere and baptize those eight. There are others who are believers, and they're hiding in fear because there is incredible persecution for anyone who converts because, you see, the Jula people are Muslim. That's their identity. This is our cultural identity. This is what we believe. This is who we are. This is what we do. And if Jesus comes in, they're afraid it may change things, and they're fearful of it, and there's resistance to it. And so the challenge is this. The missionaries have said, if we, Parkway, if we could provide water for the people of Jula, for the villages to you, if we could meet a need in Jesus' name, then that would open up doors and they would see the love of God poured on over them and it would, take, it, would, it would ease the resistance and windows to share the gospel would open and they would be able to move freely and they could share more and more people could hear the gospel. And so if we, Parkway, the challenge is for us, Parkway, to provide water for them. Because right now they get up at four in the morning and the ladies walk long distances and early in the morning by the time the heat comes up, the well is dry. And whatever they go to, that water source is dry. And if we could provide for them in Jesus' name, a free gift of love, sharing the joy of Christ, it would ease it, the tension and the resistance to the gospel. And lives could be changed forever. Listen to the missionary, Kathy Daniel, who's kind of overseeing that part of Africa as she talks about the challenge for Parkway. There's no other church that's been challenged with this. No other opportunity is lined up for us, and there's no one else talking to them about a well. If we don't build it, it's not going to happen. But listen to her about how the power of the gospel could spread because of this well. Watch this. Good morning, Parkway. I'm Kathy Daniel. We met some years ago, but I've been corresponding with you off and on for many years now and just appreciate your opportunity to partner with us. We are excited about the work among the Jula people, a 100% Muslim people group. We began working with a group in the city and in the village. And as soon as we entered in the village, they started to ask us for water. And that's been a year and a half ago. And I have not given an answer because I didn't want the water to arrive before the gospel did. But the gospel has arrived for a year and a half now, they're still asking us for water. We've just been through the dry season. The women go at four in the morning to get water because it's finished at six in the morning, and they're still asking us for water. Among these 30, we have eight who have chosen to accept Christ that will be baptized this coming month in September, and others who have believed, but they're staying hidden. We're excited about being able to partner with them, go the next step in a relationship to show them Christ's love. We appreciate you partnering with us in that project. Thank you. We have an opportunity to be a part of something that's eternal. That we could sacrifice ourselves and our wants and our desires for just a little while in order that we can make a difference in someone else's life. Imagine if you would, if we are able to build a well And a village that is resistant to the gospel suddenly has their needs met. And suddenly a village elder would go, you know what? Maybe we should hear what they have to say. And a missionary comes in that has trained people. And and, and one of those 30 comes and shares the story. And while they're sharing the story, this kid is sitting by the fire. And this kid hears the stories of Jesus and gives his heart and life to Jesus. And you and I, we just had a chance to change eternity. 
We just affected eternity. We just influenced somebody for eternity. Why? Because we were willing to join in someone else's mission effort where God is moving. And we didn't think of ourselves. And we didn't think of our, you know, hanging on to our things and our joy. And we were committed to eternal things. And we decided to give to something that's going to last and forever and ever. Don't you want to be a part of that? Wouldn't that bring you joy to be able to say a life was changed and I was a part of that? And not just that kid, but he went home and told his parents. And then when he grew up, he told his kids and they told the grandkids. And on and on and on it goes that you and I had a chance to be a part of that. And that story would be relived in village after village after village after village as we're a part of something bigger than ourselves. So I know you're asking how much. And it's a big number. It's $20,000 is what we need to raise. And that sounds like a lot. But for a church budget of $1.2 million a year that we give, that's not a lot of money. But it is a sacrifice. And I know it's a sacrifice because I'm not asking you, church, to stop giving to the budget so we can give to the Jula. I'm asking you to keep giving to the ministries of your church and give above and beyond that. And for some of you, that is a huge ask. And for others of you, it's not. But my, but my challenge to the Parkway family is let's all do this together as a family. Not some of us, not a few of us. Let's all do something. Everybody give something. Little, small, large, it doesn't matter. Whatever you can give, whatever God lays on your heart. Instead of going to lunch one day with your family, maybe you just don't go eat. And that $25, $35, $45 you would spend on your family, depending on how much your kids eat. Mine eat a lot, right? So it depends on how much they eat. But you save that and you set it aside for the Jula kids. Maybe instead of doing something that you thought for doing it for yourself, you decide I'm going to save that money and I'm going to put it towards building a well and doing something for all eternity. We have a chance to make a difference. All of us. And I'm just asking you to pray about, and us, we as the Parkway family, to step up to this opportunity to share the joy. You've been blessed. You know Jesus. You know the joy of Christ. Why don't we build a well in Jesus' name so they can know Jesus too, so they can rejoice, and they can smile, and they can laugh, and they can have all the things that are going on in their world, and that they know that God is there with you, and that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. You know. Let's share it with them so they can know. Let's do something for eternal. Next week, we're going to take up an offering to build a well. We're going to have a choir, and we're going to have communion, and we're going to build a well. All ne- I told you it's going to be a revival, right? And you'll have a chance next week to bring your offering forward and lay it on the table. You can do it online, that's fine. You can do it in the red mailbox, that's where we take our normal offering. You can do all of that. But I ask you to pray about, what would God have for you to give? I'm already praying about for me. Heather and I will be praying together. What does God want for us to give to share the love of Christ with people around the world? And if we don't, nobody else is going to do this project. It is God's timing for us. Go to that next picture. As we wrap up the joy... This is our logo picture. And every week we've had a different picture of somebody else having joy. And this guy has a ton of joy. And I don't know if he's got the Beats headphones on. I don't know if he's listened to a song. If it is, it's probably Build My Life that we just sang because that's one of my favorite songs. So thank you, Jay, for doing Build My Life, right? But uh, I just want you to know that the joy of the Lord is for you. And my question is, do you have the joy, the joy of an abundant life that God has for you? Is that your heart? You may not be smiling that big like that guy is, but is that kind of joy in your heart? And if not, why not? What is it that you have to do or be or give so that you can be joyful? We know that the joy comes from Christ and Christ alone. And if there's someone here in this room who does not know Jesus, there is no way that you're going to find joy outside of a relationship with Christ. So you need to listen if that's you. You can look everywhere that the world tells you to look, and there will be no joy in it. There'll be some happiness, but happiness comes and goes, and it goes more than it comes. And you will find yourself struggling in life if you're looking in all the wrong places. Where's the right place to look? In a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you do not have that, 
you do not have eternal joy. Today is a day that you could find that joy, even for the very first time. And all you have to do is surrender your heart to him. Just say, God, I'm messed up. I am separated from you. I, I keep making mistakes. Please forgive me, and I'm going to surrender my heart and my life to you. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Be the boss of me, and I'm going to live my life forever for you. And when you do that, and you turn loose of the reins of your life, and you grab hold to Jesus, he will change you from the inside out, and you will experience incredible inexplainable joy no matter what this world throws at you no matter what you face today Christ will take you by the hand and he will walk with you through that would you bow with me in prayer someone in this room may or watching online may need to pray that prayer and cry out to God and say God forgive me somebody right now might be praying that prayer saying God I have messed up please forgive me I surrender I give my heart to you. I give you my life. I give you control. God, will you please come into my heart and life? Jesus, clean me up on the inside. I want to live for you today. Others of us in the room may want to rededicate our lives and say, God, I was there once, but I'm not there now. And I pray, Lord, that you would forgive me. And I want to get back to where I used to be. I want to be in a right relationship with you, Father. Others need to make other decisions. We need to come and pray before you. Pray for other people. God, I pray during these next few moments that you would speak to our hearts. That we would not just be hearers of the word, but we would be doers of the word. Not just believers of Jesus, but followers of Jesus, Lord, that we would know that we are in a right relationship with you, obedient and following, and help us to think of others. God, give us an eternal mindset so we can be a part of something that matters beyond us, something that will last forever. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. And thank, us, thank you for your forever love. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. During this time of invitation, the altar is open for you to pray. There are staff here for you that would love to pray with you. If you need to make a decision, come and talk to us. Maybe you just need to celebrate your great God right where you are, celebrating the joy of the Lord that no matter what you face, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's stand together where we are. Let's lift our voices to him. As God speaks to your heart, you move.
very exciting day. And Brother Matt has already told us to look forward to next week. But God is moving today, and we are very excited about that. Eli, come on up here, buddy. I get the pleasure of, if you can see him, Mr. Eli Underwood, I tell you what, hold on tight. There we go, that's a little better. This is Eli Underwood, and Eli is coming today to let all of you know that he has asked Jesus into his heart. And if you would welcome Eli into the Parkway family, let him know it by that friendly Parkway wave. And Eli, that's just us saying that we are part of your family now, and we are glad that you are part of our family. And here in a moment, we're going to let all of you come meet Eli and his parents. But first, we have another announcement. Way to set the standard high, Daniel. I appreciate that. Uh, come on up, AJ and Brittany. Um, it is my privilege to be able to introduce to you, um, maybe for the first time for some of y'all, but second and third and fourth for the rest of you, uh, Miss Brittany. She's coming to unite with our church today. And uh, today we also have, yeah, all right, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. And we also have the privilege of, of her son, AJ, coming to join with us uh, by baptism. He's put his faith in Jesus. He's talked to Miss Melody, talked with myself at kids camp, and we are super excited about what God's doing in you, AJ. If you would welcome them, there it is, I'll take that. Give them that friendly Parkway wave of welcome. AJ, I thought about lifting you up on the stage, but then I decided it's not a good idea. <laughs> But what is a great idea is when we finish, come by and welcome them. And uh, AJ's sister, Isabella, you come on up here and stand with your, your mom and your brother. Uh, when, when we finish, come on, girl, you got this. She's like, thanks, Alan, for pointing me out in front of everybody. It's okay. You can, you can blame me. It's okay. Uh, but we really are so thankful that each and every one of you have been here with us today. Whether you've joined us online or you've joined us in person, it's great to be part of a family. And uh, we're so glad we get to do life together. So... We are finishing up. Come by and greet these, and y'all have a great day in the Lord. Have a good day. Bye.